Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhad in which we would look at what is the alpha of a stock. As always, before we start, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. Subscribe to my YouTube where I have 1,800 plus accounting, auditing, tax, finance, as well as Excel tutorials. If you like my lectures, please like them and share them. If they benefit you, if you're listening to this recording, it means you are here to looking for help. Please share this help with others. Also visit my website, farhatlectures.com for additional resources to complement and supplement this course as well as your other accounting and finance courses. So what is the alpha of a stock? Well, simply put, it's the difference between the expected return, the stock expected return, and its return per the security market line, or simply put, following the cap M formula, which is the capital asset pricing model. And what's that formula? The expected return equal to the risk-free rate plus the beta times the expected return on the market minus the risk-free rate. The best way to illustrate this is to work an example to show you how it works. Suppose the return on the market is expected to be 14%. We have a stock with a beta of 1.2 and the T-bill rate is 6%, which is the risk-free rate. The SML would predict an expected return as follow. We'll take the risk-free rate of 6% plus beta times 16, 14 minus 6, which is the risk premium, will give us an expected return of 15.6 as per the security market line. So simply put, when we say we said 14% here, this is the expected return on the market and the expected return on the market well we should have a beta of one so this is right here and this is the security market line any stock falls on this line we say it's fairly priced obviously this this is a beta a stock a beta of one its expected return is 14. now when we said a beta of 1.2 when we said this stock is a beta of 1.2 the expected return of this stock should be 15.6 so per the capital asset pricing model, the expected return of this stock should be 15.6. Now, let's assume if one believes that the stock will provide instead a 17% return, not 15.6. Well, if, it, if, at, if, at, if at beta 1.2, we're going to earn, let me change the color here. If we're going to earn at beta 1.2, if we believe it's going to be 17%, it means we have a positive alpha of 1.4, which is the difference between 17 and 15.6. What should we do? It means this stock, because it's not on the security market line, it's above the security market line. It's above the security market line. We should buy it if we expect it to be, if we expect it to earn 17%, because according to the cap M, it should only earn 15.6. So this stock is outperforming, outperforming. Let's assume the expected return is is only 15. So let me do this in a different color. If the expected return is, let's say 15 is here. Let me go back. Let's say, let's use this color. 15 will be right here. So 1.2 will be someplace here, 15 someplace here. Then we have a negative beta of negative six. What does that mean? It means this stock will underperform the market. What should I do? I should sell the stock because it's underperforming and buy the stock that's overperforming. Let's take a look at another example to see how this all fits together. Stock XYZ has an expected return of 12%, a beta of one. Stock ABC is expected to earn 13% with a beta of 1.5. The market expected return is 11%, risk-free rate is five. According to the cap M, which stock is a better buy and what's the alpha for each stock? Actually, from the alpha, we're going to know which one is the better buy and plot the SML and the two stocks. Well, we can plot them roughly. First, let's compute the cap, the expected return for each stock, starting with X, Y, Z. Well, what we're going to do, we're going to take the risk-free rate, which is 5% risk-free rate plus the beta of XYZ, the beta of XYZ is 1 plus 1 times the market return is expected to be, what's the market return here? It's expected to be 11%, right here, sorry, 11% minus the risk-free rate 5%. This is all percentages. So let's do this. 11 minus 5 equal to 6. 6 times 1 equal to 6. So the expected return on XYZ stock is 11%. Hold on a second. The expected return is 11% per cap M. This is, I'm going to write this, per cap M. But 
We're saying the expected return is 12. We should definitely buy the stock because it's going to outperform, outperform. By, by how much? What's the positive alpha? Positive alpha of one. Well, let's look at ABC. Maybe ABC has a higher positive or maybe it lies exactly on the cap M line or maybe below the cap M line. Let's see. For ABC, again, the risk-free rate is 5%. This is all percentage. Plus, the beta for this stock is 1.5. Multiply by 11% minus 5%. And that's six, six times 1.5 is nine, plus five is 14. So per cap M, per cap M, we need to be earning, we should be earning 14%. Hold on a second. What we're saying is the expected return is 13. The difference between them is negative one. This is a negative alpha. So this one has a positive alpha and this one a negative alpha. Which one would you buy? You will buy the positive alpha because the positive alpha will out, outperform the market. So what would it look like? It would look something like this. So this is 5% risk-free rate. This is the beta. This is the expected return. And let's just draw a line here and start to plug in some numbers. A beta of one, a beta of one per cap M, it should be 11. So let's see, this is 11. So this is what it should be. But what happened is beta of one, the return was 12. Okay. This is for, um, for the, for the first stock. The second stock, the beta is 1.5 per cap M per cap M. It should have been 14%. So this is going to be right here. So it should have been 14%. But what actually happened, this stock is expected to earn only 13. So it has it has a negative beta. Sorry, my, you know, hopefully you get the point from the prior graph, but hopefully you also get the point, the difference, the, the difference of 1% positive alpha and 1% 1, 1 negative alpha. Which stock would I buy? I will buy the stock with positive alpha because it's outperforming it's outperforming the cap m as always i'm going to remind you to like this recording please visit my website farhatlectures.com for additional resources for this course as well as your cpa preparation best of luck good luck study hard and most importantly stay safe